One of the SwiftUI questions I've been asked more than any other is this. How can I dynamically change a core data fetch request to use a different predicate or sort order? The question arises because fetch requests are created as a property. So if you try to make them reference another property, Swift will refuse. There is a simple solution here, and it's usually pretty obvious in retrospect because it's exactly how everything else works. We should carve off the functionality we want into a separate view, then inject values into it. I want to demonstrate this with some real code, so I've put together the simplest possible example. It adds three singers to core data, then uses two buttons to show either singers whose last name ends in A or S. Start by creating a new core data entity called singer, and give it two string attributes, first name and last name. Use the data model inspector to change its code gen to manual slash none. Then go to the editor menu and select create NS managed object subclass. So we can get a singer class we can customize. Once Xcode has generated files for us, open singer plus core data properties dot Swift and add these two properties that make the class easier to use with Swift UI. Var wrapped first name, string, first name or unknown. Var wrapped last name returns string, last name or unknown. Okay, now onto the real work. The first step is to design a view that will host our information. Like I said, this is also going to have two buttons that let us change the way the view is filtered. And we're going to have an extra button to insert some testing data so you can see how it all works. First, add two properties to your content view struct. So we have a managed object context we can save objects to and some state we can use as a filter. At environment, managed object context, var mock. At state, var last name filter equals A. For the body of the view, we're going to use a V stack with three buttons, plus a comment for where we want the list to show matching singers. V stack, here will be our matching singers, then a button, add examples. I'll make a singer called Taylor, with the first name Taylor and the last name Swift. Then a singer called Ed, first name Ed, last name Sheeran. Then a singer called Adele, first name Adele, last name Adkins, and then save the managed object context. Then a button saying show A, which sets last name filter to be A, and a button show S, which sets last name filter to be S. So far, so easy. Now for the interesting part. We have to replace that list of matching singers comment with something real. This isn't going to use at fetch request because you want to be able to create a custom fetch request inside an initializer, but the code we'll be using instead is almost identical. Create a new Swift UI view, called filtered list. And when it opens, give it this property. Var fetch request, fetch request singer. That'll store our fetch request, so we can loop over it inside the body. However, we don't create the fetch request here, so we still don't know what we're searching for. Instead, we're going to create a custom initializer that accepts a filter string and uses that to set the fetch request property. Add this initializer now. In it, filter string fetch request equals fetch request singer entity singer dot entity sort descriptors empty array predicate ns predicate with a format last name begins with percent at comma filter. So that will run a fetch request using the current managed object context. Because this view will be used inside content view, we don't even need to inject a managed object context into the environment. It'll inherit the context from content view. All that remains is to write the body of the view. And the only interesting thing here is that without at fetch request, we have to read the wrap value property of fetch request to pull out our data. So give the view this body. Var body, some view, list, fetch request, dot wrap value, ID self, Singer in. Text. 
singer.wrapped first name, singer.wrapped last name. If you don't like using fetch request.wrap value, you could create a simple computed property like this var singers, fetch results singer, fetch request.wrap value. Now that the view is complete, we can return to content view and replace the comment with some actual code that passes our filter into filter list. So I'll say filtered list, filter, last name filter. Now run the program and give it a try. Tap the add examples button first to create three singer objects. Then tap either show A or show S to toggle between surname letters. You should see our list dynamically update with different data, depending on which button you press. So it took a little new knowledge to make this work, but it really wasn't that hard. As long as you think like SwiftUI, the solution is right there. Now for more flexibility, we could improve our filtered list view so it works with any kind of entity, and can filter on any field. To make this work properly, we have to make a few changes. First, rather than specifically referencing the singer class, we're going to use generics with a constraint that whatever is passed in must be an NS managed object. Second, we have to accept a second parameter to decide which key name we want to filter on, because we might be using an entity that doesn't have a last name attribute. And third, because we don't know ahead of time what each entity will contain, we're going to let our containing view decide. So rather than just using a text view of a singer's name, we're instead going to ask for a closure that can be run to configure the view however they want. There are two complex parts in there. The first is the closure that decides the content of each list row because it has to use two important pieces of syntax. We looked at these towards the end of our earlier technique project on views and modifiers, but if you missed them, here's a quick recap. At view builder lets our containing view, i.e. whatever is using the list, send in multiple views and our list will create an implicit hstack just like the regular list. And at escaping says the closure will be stored away and used later, which means Swift has to take care of its memory. The second complex part is how we let our container view customize a search key. Previously, we controlled the filter value like this. Last name begins with percent at filter. So you might take an educated guess and write code like this. Percent at begins with percent at key name filter. However, that won't work. You see, when we write percent at, core data automatically inserts quote marks for us so that the predicate reads correctly. This is helpful because if our string contains quote marks, it will automatically make sure they don't clash with the quote marks it adds. This means when we use percent at for the attribute name, we'll end up with our attribute and quote marks, and that's not correct. To resolve this, NS predicate has a special symbol that can be used to replace attribute names. Percent K, the key. This will insert values we provide, but won't add quote marks around them. And so the correct predicate is this. Percent %k begins with percent %at, filter key, filter value. So let's go ahead and modify our filtered list struct. So I'll say it's generic of a T, an NS managed object, and content, some sort of view. These two singers here, I'll make T and T. We want to add a content closure, which we called once for each item in the list. So I'll say let content t returns content. Then inside our list, we'll just do self.content that singer, asking our containing view to provide the content. Our initializer now needs to accept more parameters. So I'll say filter key string, filter value string, at view builder, content, at escaping, t returns content. This singer has to be t as is this one, and our predicate will be percent %k begins with percent %at, filter key, filter value. Then assign that content closure to our content property. We can now use that new filtered list by upgrading content view like this. Filtered list, filter key, last name, filter value, last name filter, singer, singer, in text, singer.wrapped first name, singer.wrapped last name. Now notice how I've specifically used singer singer as the closures parameter. This is required so that Swift understands how filtered list is being used. Remember, we said it could be any type of NS managed object. But in order for Swift to know exactly what type of managed object it is, we need to be explicit. 
Anyway, with that change in place, we can now use our list with any kind of filter key and any kind of entity. It's much more useful.